This is the Yay or Nay Show with Alex C. A sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. And now, here is Alex C. All right, here we go. It is the Yay or Nay Show with Alex C. A sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. Um, Let's see. We'll start here. So DeAndre Hopkins, he's out for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals are saying that they have plenty of other wide receivers that they can go to, and they have a lot of confidence in them. Uh, because again, DeAndre Hopkins, he's not expected to return during the regular season. Um, there's four games left, and of course, he could come back possibly during the playoffs. Uh, time will tell. Hopkins is set to have surgery in LA after suffering a knee injury with an what is this? Uh, 113 remaining in Monday night's loss to the Rams. Uh, but a recovery time hasn't been set, not a concrete one as of yet anyway. And his return for the playoffs, depending on how far Arizona goes, could be possible. So again, DeAndre Hopkins out. Cardinals feeling hopeful that he'll be back for the playoffs. And they have a lot of confidence in the wide receivers that are left in the wide receiver room. Moving on to the next story. Michigan State Spartans running back Kenneth Walker III. He's going to enter the NFL draft. He is not going to play in the upcoming bowl game that they have. Look, I've never been a fan of this. Um, they're playing in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, and that's a good bowl. It's a very good bowl, and it'd be a great way to showcase his talents one final time for the scouts, I think. I think it does yourself a big favor playing in these bowl games versus – the combine and things of that nature. But again, I get it. They don't want to get injured, but I've never been a fan of them foregoing bowl games to enter the NFL draft, but that's what's going to happen. Michigan State Spartans running back Kenneth Walker III is going to enter the NFL draft. He's not going to play in the Peach Bowl. Um, Russell Westbrook. This is something that has been rearing its ugly head for a while, and now it's really starting to wreak havoc among the sports world, and of course, I'm referring to COVID-19. Russell Westbrook is now in the COVID-19 protocols. Um, you know, this thing is just crazy. Um, it's getting crazy. All these guys testing positive, but they're not sick. They're asymptomatic. Uh, now the NFL, as I'm understanding it, has some new testing that they can do to tell whether you're going to have the ability to spread or not spread COVID-19. And if they are able to reach the threshold where they see that they will not transmit COVID-19 to anyone else. They're going to allow players to play in the NFL. I think the NBA should take the same structure, put it in place, and allow players, again, if they are able to pass the test and not have the ability to pass COVID-19 to anyone else that they're going to be playing against, they should allow them to play in the NBA as well as they're getting ready to do in the NFL. Because, again, um, you know, this is tough. It's going to make it tough. You're going to have to suspend and move games, and we could be looking at a longer season than needed if we have to suspend a bunch of games. But if we find the right methods to implement this protocol and they are 100% secure in regards to being able to tell whether somebody will or won't have the ability to transmit COVID-19 to another individual, then if people are able to meet that threshold, they should allow them to be able to play uh, in baseball football and basketball as far as I'm concerned, because again, uh, these guys lose money when they don't play as well. So COVID-19 affects everybody in a lot of different ways, but these guys, they have to play to get paid. Um, so they, they got to be able to give them the ability to get on the field or the court as soon as possible. Not to mention, you know, playoffs mean more money. Uh, wins need to take place in order for your team to make the playoffs. You don't want to hurt your seating in the playoffs because your star players are not able to play. So there's a lot of reasons for if, again, if this testing in fact is real and available, there's a lot of reasons for them to implement this. And again, determine whether somebody does or does not have the ability to pass on COVID-19 to another individual. If they find that they will not transmit it, they should allow them back on the court and back on the field without a doubt. Uh, best wishes to Russell Westbrook, Hopefully, you know, you don't test positive much longer and you're able to get back on the court. Speaking of COVID-19, another story that's out right now, Washington football team's COVID-19 list grows to 21 players. 21 players. 
All right. Washington, who's already impacted by injuries, continues to add players to the reserve COVID-19 list at a time when it can least afford to lose depth. Washington has placed 17 players on the COVID-19 list this week, including eight on Wednesday and then three more on Thursday, bringing the total to 21 as they prepare to play the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. It's almost going to be like the healthiest team is going to win some of these games, and it might be some teams that aren't deserving of the win because they're not the better team. However, they're going to win these games because they're the healthiest and kind of a little bit feels like the NBA playoffs last year, because that's really what it boiled down to last year in regards to who made it to the NBA finals. It was who was the healthiest, not who was the best. Um, Another basically COVID-19 story is the Raiders and the Browns. Uh, The game has been moved to Monday. And then on Tuesday, we're going to see the Rams and the Seahawks game. So COVID-19 again, hitting some NFL teams hard. Saturday's scheduled game between the Raiders and the Browns has been moved to Monday, and the game will be played at 5 p.m. Eastern time with the regularly scheduled Monday night football game between the Vikings and the Bears to be played at its usual time of 8.20 Eastern time. And then, of course, you know, the game between Washington and Philadelphia as well as Seattle and L.A. have both been moved to Tuesday, 7 p.m. So Washington, Philadelphia has now officially been moved. Seattle and L.A. has now been officially moved. Uh, Both of them will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll get more football during the week, but it's kind of killing the vibe and the momentum that we've been riding with, you know, COVID-19 not necessarily being a problem, being a nuisance, but not a problem. Now COVID-19 kind of becoming a problem. So hopefully, again, speedy recovery to all these players. Hopefully you're all staying asymptomatic and none of you actually get sick. And hopefully you'll get back to being able to play the sport that you love very, very soon. Best wishes to all the players being affected by COVID-19 as well as their families. Um, With that being said, that changes things a little bit when you talk about the upcoming games what you do and don't expect to happen in regards to games because COVID-19 is wreaking a little bit of havoc. you got coaches being hit as well. Sean Payton of the Saints, you know, has now come down uh, being tested positive for COVID-19. He won't be able to coach in their upcoming game. Um, You know, there's just a lot of things going on, and this is a little bit crazy. So making picks is not going to be as black and white as normal. Um, But we're going to try it anyway, so here we go. Tomorrow, Patriots, Colts, big game. And I think this is a game where the Patriots get exposed. Uh, The Colts are going to run all over the Patriots. Um, I think the Patriots are a great team. They're a good team. They're a system team. You got a great quarterback. You got the best coach in the NFL, arguably. There's no, you know, question about that. But they're going to get exposed for having the rookie quarterback. You're going to see the difference between Carson Wentz and Mac and Cheese. And you're going to see... What happens when a real run game goes at that Patriot defense? Because I do think the Patriot defense is good. Um, In all honesty, I think they're probably a top 10 defense. But I don't think they're going to be good enough to stop a superstar running back with a good offensive line in front of them. And that's what the Colts have. And that's what the Colts are. So I think, and maybe exposed was a little bit of a harsh word to use. But The Colts are going to run the ball right down the Patriots' throats. It's going to open up the pass game, and Carson Wentz is going to slice and dice that secondary up. And I think that the Patriots will be able to keep it close. I actually think the Colts will pull away in the first half. I think the Patriots will make it close in the second half, but I think they'll never get close enough. Uh, The Colts will score just enough to stay comfortably in front of the Patriots and win the game because the thing is, The Colts have the ability to put a lot of points on the board and the Patriots do not. That's the one big difference between Carson Wentz, right, and Mac Jones. Carson Wentz and the Colts, they can put a lot of points up and they can do it in a hurry. Jonathan Taylor, big runs, big breakaway runs. They can score and they can score a lot. And the Patriots are not going to be able to do that, I don't think, because, again, the Colts also have a very good defense. Um, I don't know where they are ranked. And I don't want to try and rank them on my own, but I think they are pretty good. And I think that the difference in this game is not only going to be the superstar running back of John Taylor for the Indianapolis Colts, but it's going to be Carson Wentz uh, outplaying Mac Jones. 
I think that's going to be what the big difference is. Plus, I don't see the Patriots as having a big rushing attack, so they're not going to be able to clock control. And I think Indianapolis is going to be able to do clock control with running the game. And again, and if they get a big breakaway for Jonathan Taylor, it's not going to matter. Again, you're going to be able to complement it because once that big run game hits, you're going to be able to complement it with Carson Wentz and the passing attack, and you're going to be able to overtake the Patriots. The Patriots have scored big against teams that aren't that good. The games they've won otherwise, they had low-scoring affairs, lots of defense, stayed close, and figured out how to win in the end. But against good teams, they aren't able to put up big numbers. Again, the big number games they have had have been against teams that are middle of the road or below average. But against teams that are of the caliber of a playoff team, they have not been able to put up big numbers. And I think that's going to be the difference, the scoring ability of the offenses and the quarterback play. So again, Colts, I believe, will beat the Patriots and expose some of the weaknesses that they have. Again, every team has weaknesses, so I do not mean that as an insult. It's just that the Colts are going to finally expose the Patriots because nobody else has been able to do it. Um, And next week, maybe we'll get into some of these teams that the Patriots have played and break them down a little more since we obviously know they're going to go to the playoffs. And we'll probably start to do that with a lot of the teams that are going to go to the playoffs. Uh, Titans, Steelers, look, the Titans play team ball. I get it. You got a lot of guys in the national media that think that, you know, Big Ben is going to play above his skill set because he's going to want to go out on a high note. He can want to go out on a high note all he wants to, but unless he's smoking weed, he's not going to go out high because they are not a good football team and he is not a good quarterback. And I don't care how good Mike Tomlin is as a coach. He's not on the field. He's not making plays. He's not making tackles. He's not making catches. He's not making passes. So therefore, he's not going to affect the game that much when you have an ineffective offense with an ineffective quarterback. And the Titans play team ball. They have the better quarterback. They have by far, by far, the superior defense. Titans over the Steelers. Again, I get it. National media guys want to cheer for Big Ben, but I don't care. It ain't going to matter. Titans over the Steelers. Panthers, Bills. Uh, Again, Panthers beat up. Season's over. Quarterback Cam Newton might be time to retire and just say, you know what, I'm done. Uh, Bills are going to win. So it'll be the Bills over the Panthers. Texans, Jaguars. This one's interesting. Everybody excited, jumping up and down. Oh, the Jaguars fired their coach. Oh, they're going to play loose and fancy free, and they're going to destroy the Texans. No, the Texans, unfortunately, are the better team. And I get it. We're cheering for the Jaguars now, apparently. National media cheering for the Jaguars because they're all in love with the Jaguars since they got rid of the coach that they never wanted to be the coach. But the Texans are the better team. Uh, It'll be close. I don't think it's going to be a very high-scoring affair. Texans will beat the Jaguars. Cowboys, Giants, no-brainer, not even a game. Giants need to fire the general manager, need to fire the coach. They need to bench their quarterback for a lot of reasons, but number one, uh, the medical reasons. It's time to just bench him and just play out the rest of the season. You know you got no chance at anything in any way, so why waste your time? So Cowboys over the Giants. Fire the general manager. Fire the coach. It's coming, folks. I'm telling you right now, it's coming. No results. It's coming. Cardinals, Lions, uh, another no-brainer. I get it. Cardinals are being hit also with players on the COVID-19 protocol list. Uh, So they're being affected as well. DeAndre Hopkins out. Uh, Lions pretty healthy. But it's not going to be enough, even though it's a home game for the Lions, because after all, we are talking about the Lions. And the Cardinals have a pretty good backup quarterback that will be able to do well against a below average team, which is the Detroit Lions. Cardinals will beat the Lions. Jets, Dolphins. Uh, The Dolphins will win this game. You got the better quarterback. The coach, I mean, you got the better coach, but it's still a coach that I think needs to get replaced. I think that would benefit the Dolphins. Tua is not the problem. Tua is not the one who needs to be replaced. The coach is the one who needs to be replaced. But Miami should win this game and probably win it pretty handily because the Jets have a worse coach than the Dolphins. 
And since we're all about firing coaches these days and everybody's jumping up and down because the Jaguars coach didn't show them anything that showed that the team was moving forward. Well, guess what? The Jets coach hasn't done anything to show that the Jets are moving forward either. So I guess if we're going by the standards of the national media, even though you morally apparently don't have any problems with this particular coach, but if we're going by the standards of you haven't shown me anything that shows that this team is growing, it's time to fire the head coach of the Jets. And tomorrow will be yet another reason and feather in the cap to the argument that he needs to go Dolphins over the Jets, Bengals, Broncos. Um, You know what? This is a no brainer. Broncos will play tough. They're at home. They always play tough at home, but they don't have the ability to battle against the team like the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals are desperate for the win, need the win in order to keep their noses in the playoff hunt. They have to get this win. Uh, Joe Burrow, he's going to do his thing. You've got the superior quarterback play on the side of the Bengals. Coaching-wise, I think you have the superior coach as well. So I'm going to give it to the Bengals, not to mention that defense is not half bad. They're not the greatest, but they're not half bad. And again, the Broncos are not a high-powered offense. So Bengals over the Broncos, Falcons, and the 49ers. I think this one is a no-brainer. Uh, The 49ers will beat the Falcons. It'll be a fun game to watch, but only if you're a 49ers fan. Uh, 49ers will use the run game. They're going to burn a lot of clock. And to be honest, they're probably going to score a lot of points on the ground. Jimmy G's probably going to throw for somewhere between 125 and 150 yards. He's probably going to throw it like, you know, 17 times. And he's going to go like 13 for 17 for like 150 yards. But the 49ers will have an easy day at the office against the Falcons. And then you got the Packers and the Ravens. Uh, This one, again, interesting. Uh, You got a quarterback situation going on here, and I haven't heard if Lamar is going to play or not. I know they were talking about and teasing it, saying they wanted him to play. They thought he should play. I don't know that he should play. I think they should hold him out, but I get it. They've got a division lead they're trying to hold on to. But Harbaugh has found ways to win games. And let's face it, this team has won games they had no business winning. With as many people that they have on the IR list, they have no business winning as many games as they've already won. You're going up against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. It is a home game, however, the advantage to you. That home field advantage is going to be yours. But you don't have a running back room. You don't have a receiving room. The Packers defense is playing pretty good. Got to admit it. They're playing pretty good. They're better than what I gave them credit for at the beginning of the year. So with that being said, you got to give the slight advantage to Aaron Rodgers. I would give Lamar Jackson a shot. If he were 100%, but if he comes in, he plays, and he still has, you know, that hurt ankle, that's going to injure his ability to be, you know, helpful to the offense. Because, again, the biggest weapon that he has is his legs and the ability to make teams wonder and guess, is he running or is he really going to throw? So when you take that away because he has the injured ankle, I don't know if it's going to be enough and if they're going to have enough. Uh, They should be able to keep it close because the Packers are not a high-powered, high-scoring team. Ravens should be able to keep it close. Defensively, they're good schematic-wise. Their players have been playing out of their minds. Uh, You're obviously going to be pumped up to go against Packers. But I got to give the advantage to the Packers right now. I think they're going to win. I'm only giving them like a four-point slide on this one. But I think the Packers are going to beat the Ravens. Uh, Saints and the Buccaneers, you know, uh, again, head coach out COVID-19 for the Saints. Uh, Buccaneers. You know, again, I'm not a believer in the Buccaneers, but they're going to win this game. It's the Saints. I get it. Saints have shown a little bit of life. Not enough. They've got too many problems, too many holes. Um, I think Alvin Kamara is back, which makes a big difference offensively for them. I don't know that's going to be enough because the Buccaneers, you know, they're just going to load up the box to stop the run. And they're not going to be nervous about the pass because, again, the quarterbacks for the Saints, let's be honest, uh, there are no quarterbacks. That's just the bottom line. So I'm not trusting that one at all. Then you've got the Vikings and the Bears. And this one is easy. Vikings over the Bears. Let's face it, the Bears are a stepping stone right now. They won't be next year, but they are right now. Um, You know, Vikings should have an easy time with this one. It's not going to be enough. It's too little too late for the Vikings. I don't really think they have a good shot at making the playoffs. But you still want to put yourself in the best position to make the playoffs. And to do that, you got to win out. And the Vikings will basically have a good shot of winning out by starting with a victory over the Bears because you need that momentum. 
and I think they can get it, and I think they'll beat the Bears. Raiders and the Browns, who's going to be the quarterback for the Browns? I mean, that's the question mark, right? We don't know what's going on. They pushed the game back to Monday. Is Baker Mayfield going to be available? I think, again, they should shut Baker down. He's injured. He's not healthy. He's doing more injury to his own offense than he is to his own body, and I think they should shut him down. That offense has been absolutely anemic with him at the helm. Uh, I'm not impressed with the last game that they just had. I know they won. Big deal. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not impressed. And Baker's not impressing me, and I think it's a bad idea. It's it's an ego thing for him to think that he should be out there playing. Um, Raiders, though, you don't know what you're going to get week to week. They're not focused on football. Too many problems. No coach. We all know about the other noise that's, you know, going along with the Raiders right now. Uh, and, And they're just having too many outside distractions to focus on football. That's a big problem for them. So are they going to win? Is it going to be the Browns who wins? I mean, I think the only thing that gives the Browns any kind of a shot at winning this game is the fact that the Raiders are so distracted. they got so many outside things going on. They're looking forward to the offseason. They're looking forward to what they got to do to get ready for next year. And I think that, you know, that pretty much takes away from the level of competition that they bring to the field each and every week. And that's the only thing that will give the Browns the opportunity to win even though they've got this COVID-19 stuff going on and they're going to probably still be missing a lot of players come Monday night. But this is a toss-up game. It's a column game. I I don't even think Vegas can really throw. I know that they've given a few points towards the Raiders in this game. I think that's a mistake. But then again, they've got their own rhyme and reasons, and that has more to do with money than it does with who they think is going to win. So to me, this is more of a toss-up game. Uh, It's 50-50 one way or the other. And you're not really going to be wrong until the game is over because at the end of the day, this is a pick 'em game. There really isn't anything you can hang your hat on to say one team is better than the other. Um, Seahawks, Rams, no brainer. Rams are going to blow up the Seahawks. Yes, Russell Wilson's playing better. Yes, Pete Carroll is coaching better. Yes, the Seahawks are looking better as a team. Even their defense has looked better the last couple of weeks. But even with that being said, so have the Rams, and they're on a whole nother level. Uh, what they just did to the Cardinals the other night is a basically a ramp to get them ready for the playoffs, and they still have wins to get to secure their spot in the playoffs and potentially have a shot at winning the division. But they're not going to have a shot if they don't get past the Seahawks. Rams over the Seahawks, probably going to win by a touchdown. Eagles and Washington, Eagles are the better team. There's no doubt about it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I think the Eagles will blow up Washington. Uh, Washington obviously is, you know, not as good as that win streak that they had. That win streak was pretty much, you know, one of those pipe dream deals where you believe in that team knee jerk reaction wise for a quick minute. And then the bubble bursts and you figure out, oops, I probably shouldn't have had the knee jerk reaction about Washington. And I'm one of the people that did as well, but Washington obviously is not as good as everybody thought they were. The Eagles are Hopefully, I would imagine, I don't know because I haven't looked it up, but hopefully they're going to have Minshew as the starting quarterback. Again, Jalen Hurts, in my opinion, needs to win that starting position back. If they just give it back to him, it's not necessarily going to be a bad thing when you're going up against a team like the Washington football team. However, they would do a better job offensively with Gardner Minshew at the helm, and I think he should be the starting quarterback, and they should look at him for the future as well until Jalen Hurts shows them that he has surpassed him, and I don't know that that's going to happen for a while. Honestly, I think you got a quarterback battle brewing here. But again, Eagles, either way, Jalen Hurts, Gardner Minshew at the helm, ain't going to matter. Eagles over Washington, and I think uh, the Eagles are probably going to blow them up as long as the coaches don't lose the game for them and as long as they stick with the run-first attitude that they've had while they've been winning the games that they've been winning. Again, however, you can change it up a little bit if you notice when you got Gardner Minshew as a starting quarterback – So that's why you want him there for the versatility. You don't have to be so predictable, but either way they go, as long as the coaching staff does their job, it should be the Eagles over Washington, and it should be a high-scoring affair for the Eagles, not so much for Washington. Um, Another thing that I wanted to talk about was, so you had the game that took place last night, right? And that was basically... I don't know. How do I word that? An interesting game? Chargers basically lost that game because of coaching? I know most people see it that way, and I'm one of them. 
they coached their way to a loss last night. They could and should have beat the Chiefs. And in all honesty, probably should have beat them pretty soundly because if you're going down and scoring touchdowns and field goals on every possession, you're always crossing the 50-yard line. The defense didn't even get their first stop as far as making you punt from your side of the field until like midway through the third quarter. That shows you how effective your offense was, but you made a lot of bad coaching mistakes. You can talk about player execution all you want to, but the coach didn't put them in positions to succeed. So most people agree that the Chargers lost that game simply by bad coaching. I agree. And they let the Chiefs hang around, and you let a team hang around, and I don't care who the team is, if you let a team hang around, it's going to bite you in the tail when it comes to the fourth quarter. And that's exactly what happened. And that's why Kansas City won that game in overtime. Because San Diego, sorry, San Diego, not the team, LA, made the mistake of bad coaching, bad decisions, let Kansas City hang around. And because they let Kansas City hang around, that's the reason why they lost that game. Now you have one guy who, on the national media side, tried to say that everybody's just being a bunch of whining babies. And then he went off on a tangent about something that, Nobody's even saying, but that's what he does. He always goes off on a tangent about something that nobody's really saying, but then to try and sound intelligent, he wants to talk about fans that allegedly were trying to say that it wasn't fair that the Chargers didn't get the ball in overtime and didn't get a chance to score. And he went off on that tangent to try and sound like he was saying something intelligent when he was talking about something that nobody really was talking about. Maybe a couple of people mentioned it. Maybe a couple of people brought it up. But again, a couple of people versus everybody who knows the rules and knows how it works and trying to go off on that tangent, trying to sound like you're intelligent because you can dispute those people. Uh, Anybody can dispute those people. But the reality is, is it was bad coaching that lost the game. And then the other argument that this individual came up with, and Colin Cowherd is who I'm talking about, then he tried to say, well, you can't say that coaching, you know, was the reason why they lost because you can't say that the Chargers didn't have a chance all game to win. Okay, that's uh, true, but not true. And here's the thing. So how do you get the argument that coaching didn't lose you the game when you should have been kicking field goals? And had you done that, then Kansas City would have never had the opportunity to have the game tied and force you into an overtime position. So, yes, bad coaching decisions were the reason for the loss. And some people blamed analytics and the coach, depending on analytics too much. I don't know whether that's the case or not. Bottom line is, whatever the reason is, he made bad decisions. But Colin Coward tried to say, but it was great. It was smart. What a good move. You're never going to lose a locker room. Nobody brought up losing a locker room. Nobody said anything about losing a locker room. Always going to arguments that don't exist to try and prove a point that doesn't need to be made because nobody talked about losing a locker room. And then it's a dumb point anyways. And here's the reason why Colin Cowherd's point is a dumb point. Let's say that you don't lose a locker room because you're going for it on fourth down and you're showing your players how much confidence you have in them. That's great. That's great. So you don't lose a locker room, but as a coach, you lose your job because you're not winning games, you're not getting to the playoffs, and you're not winning Super Bowls. And at some point, ownership's going to be like, hey, it's time for you to go. Have a nice day. Thanks for coming. Because you're more worried about not losing the locker room than you are about not losing football games. See, your idea, Colin Cowherd, doesn't make sense and doesn't hold merit because not losing a locker room but losing football games makes you lose your job, makes you and the general manager lose their job for making the bad decision for hiring you as a head coach to begin with. So your argument is mute and dumb because, again, to say that, well, you're you're not going to lose your locker room and you should never be mad – when he does that because he's not going to lose the locker room. And again, nobody said nothing about losing the locker room. Nobody is even thinking about losing the locker room. And again, what does it matter when you're losing the games because you make bad decisions? You could talk about they need to, you know, suck it up and figure out how to execute all you want to. But it's a coach's job to put you in the best position to be successful. And that's not what the coach for the Chargers did. So therefore, he's not doing his job. So therefore, at some point, not now, because it's only one game. And I don't know if he's been doing this in other games. I'd have to research it. But it's still early. They're still having a good season, a good year. Herbert's still developing and getting better. So not now. But if you continue to be a failure and make these kind of bad decisions, and because of these bad decisions, you're losing games, 
doesn't matter that you're not losing the locker room. You're going to lose your job. So it is a dumb point that Colin Cowherd tried to make. But he always does this. He always does this to try and make it seem like the people on the other network are whining and complaining about nothing. And now he's this big smart guy. And here's my philosophy. And here's why they made the right move because the other network said that it was the wrong move. And I'm going to show you how they're wrong and how this was the right move. But the thing is, is that you're wrong, Colin Cowherd, because again, Nobody said nothing about losing the locker room. Nobody said the locker room was in jeopardy. And there's no reason to have a conversation about something that nobody was talking about, first and foremost. Just like there was no reason to have a conversation about fans that were saying it wasn't fair. Great. There were a couple of people that were on the far right of something, and they said something a little outlandish in regards to it not being fair, that the Chargers didn't get the ball. Great. Who cares? At the end of the day, my point is solid. You can talk about not losing the locker room all you want to, and nobody was, so therefore it wasn't even a topic, but you wanted to make it a topic so you could sound intelligent, but the bottom line is your intelligent argument makes no sense. You can talk about not losing the locker room all you want to, but if you're losing football games, you're going to lose your job. So you should figure out as a coach how to make your team be in a position to be successful and make that your priority versus worrying about losing the locker room. Fact, not fiction. All right, that's going to do it for me today. You guys have a great day, and we will talk again on Monday. We'll talk about all the games that are coming up on the weekend. We'll give you COVID-19 updates on all the players, and hopefully, you know, we won't have too many games, uh, you know, get postponed due to COVID-19. Enjoy your weekend, everybody.